Hey guys, welcome back to the Crew Family Philippines. Today I'm going to be talking about how I survive here in the Philippines. And we're going to get started right now. I'm Monty Crew. Hi, and I'm Argel Crew. We're a married couple living in the Philippines. We will be covering topics about everyday life here in the Philippines. Tap that subscription button, tap that bell notification, so you don't miss out on anything. Okay, so how I survive in the Philippines. The first thing I did when I came here was we got married, of course, and then I made a few friends. I had to filter those friends. Some were good, some were bad, whatever. But when you're living over here and you, you're married to a Filipino, for one, they're going to have their friends around. They're going to have their family around. And they're always going to be talking in Visayan or Tagalog, depending on where you're at. And you, unless you're really good at it, I'm not, I can't understand them. So I needed to have some English-speaking friends that I could hang out with and chat with and you know, and, and, you know, when you're over here, you want to have good friends that are close to you. If your motorbike breaks down, if you get into an accident, if um, your car breaks down, you need somebody to come and get you. You need friends. You need people that you can rely on that have your back. And I, I have a small circle of friends. I have a lot of acquaintances. I have people that I'm friends with online that I talk to. And sometimes I spend an hour or two a week talking to a couple of these guys. And you know, it really, really helps when you're here to have those close, reliable friends. Like, you know, my father always said you can count all your real friends on one hand. And I, I've expanded that a little bit. I probably have a a good eight to ten good friends and um, so of course you guys know I have Paul as a very good friend I have um, Roy as a very good friend I have Sam Chi who's a very good friend of mine Lynn Bullard which is a pastor been a pastor in Oklahoma for 30 years really super nice guy I have my friend Jim up here I have um, a good friend, Dave Evans, he's a great guy, a country boy like me, grew up on the farm and all that stuff. And, um, you know, I, I haven't mentioned all of them, but those are really good friends of mine. They're really great guys. They really have your back and you really need that when you get over here. So maybe you can even make some of these friends online on Facebook or whatever that currently live here or moving here and you guys can hook up. Um, I have a guy, Bill, just recently came into town, 76-year-old man. Super, super nice guy. Very, I did a video with him about his, his place where he lives and rents. Very nice place. Super nice guy. And those, those are the kind of people that you definitely want to have around you. And you go to dinner at their house. They go to dinner at your house. Um, sometimes you go out to eat and what have you. Frank Schrock, he's a very good friend of mine. Italian guy, seven, just turned 71, went to his birthday last Thursday night. Um, you know, it's just great to have those people around. The other thing, I think we made a good decision. We lived in Valencia and we were renting a house. And it was a couple hundred bucks a month. Uh, I have an old video on our old channel of that. And uh, it's got 120-something thousand views, you know. Very nice place we had up there. Very big front yard. And really nice. But then when I been, went back to the United States, Ergo said, my wife, she says, um, Monty, I, I think it's silly to be living here paying this much rent. I'm going to move back on my family's property and live in the room where she grew up with two brothers still living in there. 
and it's a very, very small room, kind of like maybe a small dorm room in a college, and they all slept on the floor their whole life on the concrete. Um, but anyway, she moved back here. She was five months pregnant, and uh, she left that house and moved back here. And, and her idea was, let's let's build a house here on my family's property. And I've heard, I know I'm going to hear it in the comments, and I've heard it all before, but I love my wife. She loves me. We have an almost four-year-old daughter together. We're not going, we're not splitting up. We're not having, I love her family. Her father's a wonderful man. Uh, her brothers are great. Um, they, one, one works at a call center. The other one doesn't work, but he does help around a lot around the house, but I like to see him get a job. Anyway, um, so with all that, we decided while I was still working in the United States that we would, I would send money over and she would build a house here. So we have like a 20 by 20 room we live in currently. And uh, we have a eight by six by eight bathroom. And uh, plenty of room for us. And we have our daughter here. and She sleeps between us because she's young now. And, but we plan on, there's a wall over on the other side in a big backyard. We plan on knocking that wall out, putting the door and putting the bedroom back there for my daughter. We haven't got there yet since I had a two strokes and a heart attack. I haven't been able to work. So I'm waiting on my social security in November. Hopefully that comes through. I'm working on all that now. And um, we have a kitchen that we built that um, mostly her father paid for and built. And uh, they sold some land they had or whatever. He's been building the kitchen and putting the roof on and whatever. And we had some very nice people, including Don Centini. And she sent some money for the, the roof because poor Erica, she was out there cooking spaghetti and whatever for me with an umbrella, holding an umbrella up so she didn't get wet. And her water was up over her feet and everything else. It was crazy. But we were able to get a roof on there. And... Um, so that's what we're working on right now, and that's how I survive over here. We have, uh, I have no income. My business totally lost. I tried to sell it to some guys, and, and they gave up. They, they couldn't do it. So I have no business in the USA now. I have no income coming in. So few people, uh, some of those guys that I've mentioned and some others, um, Troy Moses and and uh, several others. Are, I can't remember everybody's name. Please forgive me with a stroke. I just can't blurt out everything and remember everything like I used to. I used to be very smart, very quick, and uh, I think very book smart and street smart. And that's just all kind of went away. You know, I mean, I... I can I remember everything that I learned before, but learning anything new, I just get totally lost. But anyway, so we built this place. Plan on building the bedroom out there for Faith. Plan on putting a front porch out here with a screen uh, door and screen screen in, so you know we don't have the bugs eat me alive. I I, I spend a lot of time out on the porch. Um, we have some. 20 by 20 room here, but it gets claustrophobic sometimes, so I like to go outside. We have a, I bought that too. I have a big 55 inch screen TV on the other side of this wall, and that keeps us busy with watching TV. And I, I think I've, I think I've pretty much cleared out everything on, um, on the different channels, and we have cable and. And I've watched so many movies, I'm just like... But I even watch Korean movies with my wife where I have to read all the subtitles. <laughs> but you just run out of stuff. I mean, there's... I spend sometimes a week and a half in here before I ever leave and go anywhere. I have trouble walking. I can walk a short distance, but anything kind of far, I kind of need a wheelchair. 
um, I have a cane that I walk with otherwise. But um, that's how we're surviving here. It wasn't, I'm, gl I'm glad that I built the house. I'm glad that we have a nice bathroom. We have a laundry room in the back. We have a shed outside, built of concrete. And uh, I'm going to clear that out and get that. My wife has stacked a lot of stuff in there, and a lot of it's just trash, and we're going to have to put it in the van and take it to the dump. That's where my brother-in-law doesn't have a job will come in. <laughs> but, um, yeah, it was... It was rough and, and, you know, losing all my mobility and, you know, I was always able to go out and work and make cash and, and make money right away and take care of things and I always took good care of my wife and family and, and uh, you know, her dad's not working right now, the house that he was, he's a construction worker and he was building a house for some people down here, still is, but they have to take a break once in a while because they run out of money. And uh, so he has to wait to go to work. So he's now out there pounding on the walls in the kitchen, putting electricity uh, pipes down the wall so we can have some outlets in the kitchen. And he's been, we have some sand left over, so he's been smoothing out the walls and, and working on that and doing the electricity. And hard working man. Uh, he's almost my, he's, we're, we're kind of the same age. And, um, I wish I was in his shape. This man works every day from the time he gets up to the time he goes to bed. All day long working. Takes a little break at lunch in his hammock. Takes a little nap, gets up, goes right back to it. I've seen this man mix concrete all day long from the time I go out on the porch at seven o'clock in the morning. He's out there mixing concrete and all with just a shovel and mixing water and, and sand and Portland cement. And he's a worker. I mean, I wish I could find some work for him to get him over there doing some stuff. Eric, I was actually cleaning a couple guys' houses now, a couple expats. And uh, that's helping out keeping us going but survival over here you want to make sure that I would say you want to make sure that you take care of your immigration things whether you get a, a long term or short term or whatever it is every six months or every month or get a 13A or SSRV or whatever they're called um, you want to make sure you take care of immigration I know guys over here, I knew an old man, he hadn't been there in years, and he told his neighbor about it, that him and his neighbor got in, <laughs> that was hilarious, he got two old men out there in their late 70s, pushing each other down and arguing, and so the one guy turned in the other guy to immigration, and that started a big fiasco, and he almost got, you know, kicked out of the country, blacklisted. But he was able to get in there and get the money in there and get it taken care of and what have you. But, you know, when you come over here, make sure you take care of your immigration stuff. I mean, it, it's not cheap, but it's not expensive. I think it's around, average out about 60 bucks a month and then you need an ACR card every six months or whatever and, and that's 50 bucks. But, you definitely want to go in and you want to take care of that stuff. The other thing is, I, I said this in my last video, I'm trying to get my Social Security. If you guys are close to Social Security or something like that, and you're waiting to come over here, stay there. Get your Social Security done. Go to the office if you have to. Go through everything. Get it done. Get a couple checks in the bank, in your bank account. And make sure, you know, all that stuff is taken care of before you ever shoot over here. Because you don't want to get here and have a bunch of headaches. And that that's what I'm going through now. So don't do it. Make sure you get all that taken care of before you come. Send your Balik buying boxes. If you have those friends over here, you have certain things you want and you're going to need over here 
for your lifestyle, make sure you take care of that. That had to take a drink. I've had uh, pneumonia. Past couple of weeks, I've had some pneumonia in my lungs. Oh, it's, it's tough sometimes. But anyway, you know, make sure you got all that stuff done. Make sure you got a couple bank accounts. A lot of these guys like to use swab and because they don't charge any ATM fees and stuff like that. So you might want to do that. But you'll get canceled on swab if you come over here and you're just hitting it all the time. Taking 20 bucks out of Taking 20 bucks here, 20. Because, you know, when I do it through my other bank, it's $5 charge here and a $5 charge in my bank. So, Schwab's eating all that stuff. But if you just pounding them and pounding them like that, that, that's not good. Just transfer your money over with remitly or whatever. Get you a bank account here. I know here in Dumaguete area, the Commerce Bank is very foreigner friendly. My wife has an account with BDO. Um, that's more for like if we had to go to Manila or, or go to Cebu for something um, through immigration or whatever it is, getting our daughter to be a citizen, and getting my social security done, whatever. You, the BDO account is good because they have branches everywhere. It's kind of like Bank of America in the United States. We have them everywhere. So I would definitely get that going. Have those two things done. Send your ballot buying boxes um, with whatever you think you're going to definitely need over here. One thing to keep in mind, and we had this discussion with a friend of mine yesterday. Your appliance is 110 if you ship them over here, they're not going to work because it's all 220. And you're going to have certain things like maybe an oven or a heavy duty mixer or, you know, something that draws a lot of power. You're not going to be able to just use one of the little cheap things like you can charge your phone in or run your razor on and charge that up or whatever. You're going to need to go to a hardware store or an electric store, electronic store, and get the the plug that'll plug in the 220, transfer the electricity over to 110. And sometimes you need a powerful one, like I was saying. So um, here in Dumaguete area, you can go to the mall, the and they have a, a handyman hardware there. You go in there and almost all the way in the back on the right hand side they have all the different transformers now you're going to have to read what you have at home that you're going to be running and read the transformer there and make sure that that transfer former is powerful enough to take care of whatever you need a lot of guys use an avr too and that is a, a thing you plug in your wall plug your refrigerator and your TV and all that stuff into and it reserves power inside like in a battery type thing and it keeps your stuff from you know we have sometimes a lot a lot of times in Valencia we had it our electricity would go up and down and uh, we would be pulling 220 volts sometimes we'd be down to 180 160 sometimes and that really wears on your appliances, running that stuff like that. So you want to take care of that and get, you know, get your, um, get the things you need and bring them with you. One thing, if you're going to bring like a power supply for your phone, they're not going to take it in the airport. They're not going to let you go through with it. It's got lithium in it and they're going to make you toss it. And that sucks. So don't bring an expensive one of those over here. You have to get one here. I would suggest and very strongly that if you want a computer, laptop, phones, whatever, buy those in the United States. You buy them here, the price is about double. And I was watching a video 
from another vlogger the other day, uh, the Filipino P. I don't watch a lot of other people's videos, but she went into Walmart in USA and she was looking at computers and stuff and other things. And it was half the cost of what it is here. Electronics here are taxed highly and they cost you highly. A TV, I paid about 800 and something dollars for our TV. I could have bought that at Walmart in the USA, a nice Sony TV like I have, probably for four or 500. And it was over 800 here. So you might want to take care of that stuff there. Even our refrigerator, you know, the appliances was very expensive here. I paid probably about 600 bucks for nothing fancy, just an average TV. The construction here used to be very, very inexpensive. Now it's getting more expensive. Not really the labor part, but the materials went up. So anything my father-in-law built has been building, he said has went up at least half, 50%. So you know, if you're paying $100 for some blocks, now you're paying 150 at least and sometimes more than that. So all that stuff adds up and, and you just wanna, you know, watch yourself in that. Um, if you move in the Dumaguete area, I will tell you, I bought this so sofa. It's got um, it's got two two lift outs on the end for your legs and um, very, very comfortable, about six hundred bucks. Um, we bought our bed there. We bought our big wardrobe closet there. Um, you can get most of the, all your furniture there. It's very good and inexpensive. Um, probably the best service. Uh, I I know I might have some guys argue with me about that to live in Dumaguete, but I've had good luck with them. Other people haven't. Um, I think about everything we have in the house came from there except for our old living room suit that I bought up the road is wicker and uh, we use that in the kitchen now because it's kind of a kitchen living room combination for the family over there. So anyway, if you have any questions, any comments, any videos you'd like for us to make in the near future, let me know. I'll work on those and see what I can do. Um, I'm going to have another video out soon about what some of our goals are going to be here um, for our future. And uh, please tune in for that. I think you'll enjoy that. At the end of here, I'm going to add a little segment on there with people's names on there that have donated money to us, helped us in other ways, and my friends. And uh, stick around and watch that. And... Um, Thank you for very much for watching. Thank you for tuning in. I hope I see you soon. And uh, God bless everyone. Be happy. Take care.